Welcome everyone. So we are recording this webinar today and we have Phil. Do you want Phil or Philip? I didn't ask oh, you that. Philip, uh, but Phil is fine. Okay. Well, it says Phil there in the corner, but I know all of your documentation says Philip. So Phil is with Phoenix Salon Suites, and this is a wonderful franchise brand for you know anyone looking to invest into a concept, typically I think more semi-absentee or absentee owner, this is really something to be geared towards. Uh, my name is Talanda, I am the franchise educator, and so this is our brand focus webinar today. So on the agenda, what we're gonna walk through is who we are and some of our backgrounds so you can understand some of our credentials here in franchising, our roles and how we help people take a look at franchising, Phoenix Salon's business overview. They're not gonna go into full detail, but enough for you to understand some of the basic elements of the business model and then maybe want to reach out and speak to them directly. What franchisors are looking for in franchisees? Should I work with the consultant, which is my side of the, the program? Is franchising right for you? How to get awarded a franchise and a timeline. So again, my name is Talanda and I am a senior business consultant or coach with the franchise consulting company. As you can see behind me, if I turn the right way based upon the mirror thing, um, the, the marketing name is the franchise educator, but the company that we represent through is the franchise consulting company. And I have the website here on the slide. Before this, I was with Rhino7 in franchise development and represented a brand there called Scout and Molly's. And before all of this franchising, I did own two franchise concept with the former spouse up in Northeast Ohio. They were business to consumer brands, uh, service brands, which is obviously very different than the model you're going to present today. Uh, I also have a photography studio kind of on the side. It helps me kind of keep creative. I was at Sherwin Williams in their marketing department at their headquarters in Northeast Ohio. So if you want to connect with me, I put the LinkedIn address here. And a fun fact, I've left this blank because anyone who might be going through the YouTube channel and listening to multiple brand um, presentations today, um, I keep using the same fun fact, which can get super boring. However, I think it poses um, an opportunity to sort of talk about uh, some different reasons to look at franchising and some different challenging questions that I pose to clients. But my father had uh, graduated college back in uh, mid 60s and was managing a McDonald's. He was one of the first people in his family to graduate college and he was managing the McDonald's and uh, they asked him, corporate asked him if he wanted to own one. And he said, no. <laughs> right? <laughs> he has a college degree. He spent all this money. Why would I own this? Which wasn't even traditional hamburgers. I, so it was something different. So I do challenge people to think about, you know, what is the marketplace and what is the, the business offering? So sometimes we have opportunities pass us by. Yeah. All right, so Philip, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Yeah, so my name is Philip Watson, uh, VP of New Business Development here at Phoenix Salon Suites. I've uh, been here a little over two years, and I handle all new franchise development um, for the system across the U.S. Um, and prior to joining Phoenix Salon Suites, I was the uh, Senior Director of Franchise Development at um, Tropical Smoothie Cafe for almost eight years. Um, so I've been in franchising most of my career. Actually, prior to that, I was a, a sous and executive chef. So I, I come from the restaurant industry um, for most of my career, but joined Phoenix as I saw as a great opportunity. Um, it alleviates a lot of the headaches restaurant owners face of having you know, a ton of employees mm -hmm. and a lot of inventory. So with our model, only one employee, no inventory. Um, it's, it's a pretty simple model to, to operate. So I was attracted to that as well as the culture here at Phoenix Lawn Suites. I want to know about your fun facts. All right. So all three of my brothers, um, or all three of us, I should say, are in franchise development um, or started out in franchise development. One of my brothers is CEO of a restaurant concept. Uh, my other brother works at IHG in franchise development, and I'm obviously in franchise development as well. And my stepdad um, is the lead guitarist of Kansas, uh, the band Kansas, and has been, still is, um, founding member. So it was a uh, pretty interesting growing up, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you were a kid when he became your stepdad? Yes, uh, probably 
four. Um, so he, he we call oh, him wow. dad. He pretty much raised me. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting story. Did you ever get to go on tour or do anything? I did actually. Oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah. I went, I went on a summer tour when I was, uh, probably 10, 11 years old. I was pretty young, but it, it was a lot of fun. Wow. All right. Yeah. We'll have to talk more about that later. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's go into what I do. We'll talk about my side of working with clients first and we'll go into Phoenix and what they have to offer as a business model. But my role is very similar to an executive headhunter. Um, some people call us realtors for business. We are paid by the franchisors. It is a free service to the clients. The fees do not change. So whether you go directly to the franchisors, uh, some people try, they never hear from the franchisors. They do get thousands of clicks a day. Uh, you know, they don't know who's uh, mad at their boss for the day or who's serious. And that's where our role comes in uh, to really work with people on a close knit basis, really vet them out and understand which brands are a good fit for them, which ones are available, uh, what their goals are. Uh, we provide that research, the information and resources to really help someone understand if franchising is a good fit for them. So I kind of went through it a little bit already on the previous slide, but the franchise matching process, determine one, if the ownership of a franchise is a viable option. Sometimes it's just timing. Sometimes um, it's, you know, what may be available. Sometimes someone's moving and they don't know yet. Uh, sometimes people want to look at a plan B. Sometimes people want to leave their job yesterday. So they want to look at owner operator. Um, there's all kinds of different reasons. And we talk about future goals too. So those come into play to understand the best matching process. It's not just about, oh, I see McDonald's everywhere and I want one or a Chick-fil-A. Uh, really understanding, you know, the criteria for a business and what the business skills are that are needed to run the business. Um, and, of, and of course, the finances, um, you know, that's always a reality, but we do thoroughly analyze clients, unique goals and skill sets to provide that curated list to them. And then they can choose, you know, here are the two or three that I'd like to begin with. And sometimes, you know, one works out, sometimes they move on to the fourth or fifth one on the list. It is a process. We advise and consult on all aspects of the due diligence and the research and the investigation and help provide financial and legal information. So, you know, you're not alone in this process. We are here to help. Um, I've been through it myself. So I've been in this industry for 12 years now, 13 years. <laughs> we can say a long time, I guess. So I've been in the client's shoes. I can certainly understand, you know, the fear, the process, the anxiety, the excitement, sort of the gamut of everything that they're going through. And then Phoenix Salon Suites role, they're the investigation. They are the ones that are gonna tell you everything there is to know about the business model. So they conduct the investigation process to learn all aspects of that business model from soup to nuts on everything. They provide the financial information. I say this a hundred times during this presentation, um, only because I know people are so anxious. We always want to know, you know, is the investment worth it? What can I make? And, and for as exciting as that is, that's not my role to tell someone that is the franchisor's role. Um, and then you guys assist with the validation calls with current franchisees. And what I do tell clients is, is learn everything about the business model first then you will get the opportunity to talk with franchisees. There's, there's no reason to ask a franchisee. You, you get someone on the line, they're busy, you're busy. You don't wanna ask them an elementary marketing question and that's covered in an investigation. You wanna ask them the good second tier, third tier questions and really make it beneficial for your time on what you're asking them, which I do provide clients a full list, um, at least to start, um, of validation questions to ask franchisees. So some common questions that I covered during a consultation is pros and cons of franchising. Is franchise ownership right for you? How we conduct this matching process? What should you as the client, so what should I be focusing on for business ownership? There are certain things to be thinking about, questions to be asking yourself. What are your goals? Thinking about you know two years out, three years out, five years out, 10 years out, where do you want to be? Um, and I tell clients too, goals can be, you can get super serious with them and you know, maybe you want your business masters. Um, you know, maybe you wanna get a jet ski. It, it doesn't matter, there's no judgment, but it does help to really filter down and outline business matches that are a good fit. What do franchisors look for in franchisees and when to look at funding? Um, so funding at the beginning, I mean, to put it simply, 
you know, if you're going to be looking for a house and start working with a realtor, you need to understand from the beginning what you're pre-qualified for. There's no sense in your time or the realtor's time to look at a house that is not something that is in the price range on what you could be funded for. So same thing here in franchising, getting an understanding on that. And of course, you know, maybe what you're qualified for isn't what you're comfortable taking a loan out for or spending on. So that's another tough question to ask yourself is what are you comfortable spending? So some popular questions and hangups, um, without a doubt, every client is this would not work in my market. Uh, there's too much competition. What if an employee or manager leaves, but it sounds like, you know, with what you already said, there's not going to be a whole lot of that with your situation. Right. I've never done salon ownership. I've never done painting. I've never owned a pet store. I don't like dogs. Um, I don't know anything about fitness, you know, whatever industry you want to insert there. Um, not saying that you should get into something you've never done, or maybe you shouldn't get into a full on restaurant, like what you said with your brothers, the CEO of a restaurant business. Um, some industries certainly, you know, do require a little bit more understanding of the industry, but others don't. And that again, comes in where we can help, um, outline some of the different industries. Um, I'm not ready to speak with the franchisor, but can you tell me about their marketing? Can you tell me about how much it costs? Can you tell me about, and they want to know all the answers from me. And so guys, I'm not the person to tell you that. I know an investigation of a franchise sounds very serious, but it's not. And I sort of joke around with it because I think adding some humor, injecting that into it can, can make it a little bit more relaxed, but it's just casually dating. No one's serious. No one's making a business decision. It's just learning and evaluating. But the only way to learn about the business model is to speak directly to the franchisor. And then, right. of course, and, yeah. And I, tell, I tell my clients the same exact thing. Listen, a decision doesn't need to be made on, on the first right. calls. It, it's all about getting you informed and making sure that we're the right fit on the front end and taking you through right. the process. Yeah, and sometimes, you know, a, a client decides that it's no longer a good fit or you guys decide it's no longer a good fit and that's okay. Right. Absolutely. And then, of course, how much can I make? I mean, certainly you're not going to, you know, invest or get a loan or any of the other financial options that we do walk through. Um, for a business, if you're not going to make money, that's a very important, valid question. Um, but it's a frustrating answer in franchising from the standpoint that, um, you can look at the FDD and see the item 19, which I wrote a blog post about to, to explain some of this, but the franchisor provides that FDD. Um, they can only speak to what's in that item 19. If they speak outside of it, it's an earnings claim and that gets into gray questionable territory. However, when I mentioned a few slides ago that you can speak with franchisees for validation, they can talk to you if they wish, but they can talk to you about their numbers and their experience. Um, of course, you know, it, it gets a little weird because every franchisee is going to run their business different. Some follow the system to a T, some don't. Um, there are McDonald's franchisees that don't, aren't successful, um, which is a little crazy to think about. But it is up to you as the franchisee um, on how you're going to run the business. Some people run more through it on the expenses, some don't. So, you know, really getting a hard and fast black and white number on how much you can make is not gonna happen. So I just like to set that up front. I hope I'm not disappointing anybody, but that I just wanna set that expectation up front. It is more of a pro forma based thing um, to get an understanding of a range on understanding what other franchisees are saying and then the item 19. So some rules and guidelines. Um, I'm repeating a lot here that I've already stated, but it is important information. Only the franchisor again can provide all the detail of the business model and the financials. Investigating the franchise is not making a business decision. It's just learning and evaluating. And you may decide even after talking to two franchisors that franchising isn't right for you and that's okay. If you can follow the process of the investigation, you are more likely to be awarded a franchise. Obviously it's kind of um, cut and dry there that if you can follow the process of the investigation um, and the process that we go through, then you're more likely to follow the process of the proven business model. Both sides are interviewing each other and both sides can choose to respectfully end the investigation if it's not a good fit. And my role is to help you get awarded and coach you through the process. So a general timeline, I could have put a lot of different notations in here, but I didn't wanna make it too wordy. So this is just very general, but 
Um, I start out with an initial call to talk with clients. And based on that, if we choose to move forward, then there's some documents to fill out. We have an hour long consultation call that I build the business model from that we use as your filtering process. Now this business model, it can change, it can adjust, it's, it's flexible, um, but it is a starting point. And then we uh, go out, our team goes out and does uh, franchise or matching and pulls from the different areas on what's a good fit for you and present it to you as the client. And then you get to choose out of that list which ones you would like to begin speaking with. Now, sometimes you come back to the list, sometimes the list changes, but it, you always have to start somewhere. Then you begin the investigation with the franchisor. And that investigation, so getting up to that point is about four to five weeks. Now, that can depend on life, your job, kids, you know, everything in between. But typically that can be about, you know, three to five weeks. And then an investigation with the franchise or the fastest I've ever seen, I've been saying this on every webinar, but the fastest I've ever seen is three weeks. Um, but typically that's someone who's been in franchising before they know exactly what they want. They've owned a franchise before they've gone through the process at least. Um, but typically an investigation takes about 12 weeks and then you have a meet the team day. If you're awarded a franchise system, then you can either decide to accept or decline. And that's just the process to be awarded a franchise. Then you have for you guys, as you will then discuss about real estate, um, you know, hiring the employees, which doesn't sound like much for you. Um, but that then adds on extra timing. So, you know, then we work backwards and figure out when would be a good time to start, you know, our process here. Okay, so Phil, could you tell us about Phoenix Salon Suites? Yeah, absolutely. So Phoenix Salon Suites, we're, we're a suite licensing company where we license out enclosed rooms for not only salon professionals, so when you think salon, like hair, nail, makeup, but also what we call lifestyle professionals, so massage therapists, teeth whitening, mm -hmm. Botox, chiropractors, tattoo artists, dietitians, this goes on and on. If it falls in the health, beauty, wellness arena, we can license a suite to them. <clears throat> so typically what franchisees will do is lease a space Roughly 5,500 is our average, which yields 30 suites. So they subdivide the property into 30 suites and then license those out to the professionals. So our franchisees are more or less property managers at the end of the day. Um, okay. Once you license a suite to the professional, you don't have to clean their suite, market their business, train their employees, do their scheduling. You're really just upkeeping the, the common areas. And if they have a leaky faucet or broken door hinge, get it fixed quickly. And that's you know, really the extent of it. Wonderful. All right. Yeah. So um, appreciate the, the introduction, Talanda. Um, Want to get in quick overview you saw there, um, but we'll dive in about us. So uh, we're actually at 305 locations. You can go ahead and click next. Sorry. Okay. Um, and our founder, Gina Rivera, her and her family come from a very long lineage of salon professionals. They have 27 living individuals in their family that are all in the industry. And so she actually started out um, cutting hair at a standard booth rent salon in, in 2002, had this idea because her mom used to work in the back of a, a salon and had her own private room. You know, what if I open a location with a bunch of mini salons like that? So in 2007, she opened the first Phoenix Salon Suites in Colorado Springs. Uh, location did so well that they actually ended up signing a lease for their second location only two miles down the road from the first. Um, towards the end of 2007, early 2008. And pretty much right when they signed the lease, the housing crisis happened. They had some sleepless nights, lost some line of credit, but ultimately they were able to get that location open. Um, so I always like to point out that time frame. It shows how recession, recession resistant this model really is. Um, people's hair and nails are gonna grow during good times, bad, and we're, we're fairly vain as a society. So we always wanna look good. Um, that's not gonna change any, anytime soon. And uh, it's also very technology resistant. There's never going to be an app that's going to replace getting in any of these services done. Um, so the fact that they did so well, um, you know, during the housing crisis just proves that. And, you know, even at, at recent times um, with COVID, we, we saw a 345% increase in professionals looking to license a suite uh, last that's year. Fascinating. And, yeah, it's huge. The, the demand is just through the roof right now. Um, and so far year to date, we're up over 240% over last year. Uh, so people are looking for more compartmentalized space, easier to control environment. Um, and a lot of these salons are closing, which is putting professionals on the street, um, so to speak, and, and looking for a new place to operate out of. Uh, so 
and also our, our occupancy uh, increased last year as well. Um, so started, sorry to go back, uh, started a franchise in, in 2010. Um, we're at 305 locations. We're operating in 34 states. And Gina is a very big advocate for the professionals. So we have that connection with the end consumer that our competitors don't. She spent over 13,000 hours in a suite herself. So she knows what it's like to work in a suite and what you need to work in that environment. Um, she's been on Undercover Boss. They're turning your autobiography into a movie. They're filming a makeover show. Oh, um, really? Yeah, so she's oh, that's a fun little fact there about her. Yeah, she's a, um, a celebrity in the space. I think she's close to a million followers on social media. So we get a lot of attention and attraction and retention because of that, that other brands just aren't going to get. And again, having that connection with the end consumer is key. Um, so you can go ahead and click next. Um, so what got us here today, again, having that connection, having strong culture in our locations, we're not looking at our professionals just as a, a rent check. Um, you know, a lot of our competitors will nickel and dime, for example, charging and having coin laundry in the locations. We don't have coin laundry. Uh, we also don't charge to split a suite. And what does it matter if Bob has it Monday through Wednesday, Terry has it Thursday through Sunday. It's the same amount of square footage. Um, as long as you're getting your payment on time, it's no sweat off your back. Uh, again, 305 locations. We currently have 53 locations that are under construction. So these are leases signed, hammers are swinging. Um, we have another 147 that are in the pipeline for development. So most of our franchisees are multi-unit operators. The average franchisee owns 2.5 locations. So these are franchisees who signed up for three, five, 10 units, whatever it may be. They've opened a few and have a few more to go. So we're poised for some major growth. We could stop awarding franchises today. We break the, the 400 mark, no sweat. Um, we li license to over 8,000 stylists. Now, this is just looking at stylists, not the other lifestyle professionals we license to. So that's pretty cool. You know, there, there's a big passion piece that comes into play to the, the fact that we've been able to help 8,000 people accomplish their goal of owning their own business. Exactly. Um, yeah. I mean, our franchisees will get hugs um, from the professionals saying, you know, thank you so much. I have so much more time to spend with my family. I'm making more money. I set my own hours. I'm building my own empire, um, that type of thing. So um, we've also had some pretty strong accolades here. We've been in the entrepreneur franchise top 500 list uh, eight years running. We're actually in the top 15 percent. Um, on that list, which is a, a pretty big deal when you consider there's roughly 3,500 different brands out there at any given time. I bet Talana knows the exact number, um, not to put her on the spot. Um, and been in the fastest growing top 200 list seven years running as well. That's impressive. Um, so <clears throat> it looks like the PowerPoint to Google transition of the slides. <laughs> Yeah, a little, little overlap. Yeah, a little overlap there. Um, but to the to the left here, and you know, if you're looking at Phoenix right now, you're looking at us at a great time because we're doing a franchise reimage right now. We're reimaging our existing locations. Any new franchisee uh, to join is going to be developing the new layout. So this is an example of actually one of our corporate locations. We have seven corporate locations. Uh, and outside of that, our senior management team also owns almost 20 locations themselves. So you have people who have seen behind the curtain, so to speak, and mm -hmm. our franchisees themselves, our head of real estate has seven, our operation, head of operations has six, our founders still have four. Um, so again, it, when I was doing restaurants, once people realize what it takes to run a restaurant, nobody yes. wanted to become a franchisee. Yep. A very, very <laughs> different model. Um, all right. So again, this is a, an example of one of our layouts. Uh, this location is actually about 4,500 square feet and yields 29 suites. Um, because we did a lot of our uh, suites in this location, our standard size at 110 square feet. We also offer premiums. Premiums are 120 to about 140 square feet, and then doubles, which are 170 to 180. Um, so you can see a double and a premium there in the middle. And whether you're 4,000 square feet or 10,000 square feet, economies to scale is going to come into play. You're still going to have our break room, our water feature you see in the front, the utility room, storage when uh, men's women's bathroom etc so after 4,000 square feet you're really just adding a few additional square feet into the hallway and then additional um, suites into the property 
And this is a community of, of like-minded professionals. Uh, the, the Gina example of having 27 family members in, in the industry isn't too uncommon. A lot of the times, if you have one hairdresser in the family, you have a few more. So word of mouth is going to spread. If you do a good job operating, it's going to help fill up the location. And these professionals, they want to be surrounded by their, their friends and family. So if they can help kind of dictate their, their neighbors, then they're going to, going to do that. Um, we also provide training to, to get our franchisees trained up. Uh, we do two to three days of off-site training in a classroom setting with other franchisees. We focus on marketing, um, professional retention, any legalities you may need to be aware of. And then also two to three days of on-site training at your location a few days before you're open to make sure that you're set up, all your questions are answered and okay. um, ready to rock and roll. Um, we also do an annual convention, bi-weekly webinars with all of our franchisees. And, and actually during our convention, we invite our professionals as well. So didn't do it last year for obvious reasons, but um, previous year we had over 800 people in attendance, but only had 110 franchisees. So it's a great opportunity for the professionals to come along, see that they're a part of something bigger than themselves. We have breakouts for the professionals that are led by Gina and breakouts for the franchisees that are led by our CEO, uh, Jason Rivera. Very nice. So here's a, yeah, we, we can go fairly quick um, through this, but these are okay. just um, some pictures of the new design. So we have our freestanding water feature there, um, a shot of the hallway. Yeah. Yeah, so shot of the hallway. So you see benches sticking out. Customer can wait on their professional to finish up with the previous customer. We have plaques on the wall where the um, professional can put their business card, has their suite number. Um, you can go ahead to the next one. Um, so this is a shot uh, of the corner here. So our suites, we've thickened the glass on, on the doors and windows um, to help with soundproofing, thicken the ceiling tiles, more insulation. Um, the professionals, they can paint the walls, hang decor, really make the suite their own. They can frost the glass on their door, say they're a massage therapist, they want more privacy. Right. Um, so they're absolutely able to do that. That's and interesting. You can kind of put it, like, pick the colors and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So um, franchisees really love the, the new design. It's a little more modern. Now, our overall design is slightly understated because we want the focus to be on the professional and their business. Um, you know, we don't want to scare them off by a fancy, you know, common area, but also it helps keep the cost down um, for our franchisees. So you can go ahead and, um, you know, now we'll, we'll talk about the actual model. Um, so we had our uh, model there, Gina Rivera, uh, play on words. So you can make this as semi or as truly absentee as you would like. We have franchisees who live in California, operate locations in Florida. They literally go to their Florida locations a couple times a year because they have their one employee doing everything. Now, some now this is a key reason why I ask people about their goals if they're planning on moving. I mean, these are these get into reasons because there are opportunities in some franchise systems where you can own in one state or live in one state, own in another. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we have a franchisee who has locations in eight different states. Wow. <laughs> um, so th there's, and, and with the semi-absentee model, it allows, uh, kind of what you're alluding to, <clears throat> a much larger or even multi-state footprint because it's, and I always revert back to restaurants, it's what I know, but it's not like restaurants where you're spending 60 hours a week in the business and you need to be close to the business. Um, again, you can have an employee operating the location. And we actually recommend our franchisees are not in their location all the time. Because if they okay. are, it can make the professional feel like they're being watched. Yeah, um, I can. Yeah, and, and a big reason that they join this you know, um, license to suite from us is because they're getting out from under the man, so to speak, and they're able to, to operate their own business without having somebody in their hair all the time. Um, no, no pun intended with the salon <laughs> Uh, so, <laughs> um, no inventory. Now the option is there. Our, our founders have their own product line that we wholesale uh, to our franchisees. Vast majority of our franchisees are not selling product. Um, when you do that, it adds another layer of complexity. You need a point of sale system. You need somebody there to ring in the product. So most aren't doing that, but it is an option. Um, no full-time employees. So your standard employees typically going to be working 20, 25 hours a week. They come in every other day or so, keep the common areas clean. 
And again, it just depends on how much responsibility you want to give that individual and the caliber of that individual. Some franchisees will say, here, you can do everything. Others will say, I want to own the licensing suites and taking inquiries from professionals. That's where my money's being made. So there's a lot of flexibility in how you, you manage that. We'll walk you through different ways to, to operate the location, obviously. Okay. Um, and, trading. and no cash handling in this business. You don't want to collect cash because there's no paper trail. It can become a he said, she said situation where, where nobody wins. We do have an app that allows you to collect payment from your professionals via ACH. Some franchisees will even do Cash App, PayPal, Venmo, um, hard check with some of the, the older professionals. Um, hey. <laughs> I yeah. back yesterday. <laughs> Sorry, the, the, the younger professionals, I, I don't know right, yeah. how to write a check, but uh, <laughs> so there's a, there's a lot of flexibility there. Some franchisees will say, no, we use the app and, and that's how I, I need you to pay. The more flexible ones are, are obviously um, can, can achieve higher occupancy and higher retention. And we've never had a location fail um, in that's our entire big, lifespan. So yeah. We've had three conversions. Um, one franchisee owned the real estate, sold the real estate. The new buyer came in and converted it to something else. Um, another franchisee was um, marketing the brand in a way that was hurting our image. So we, we were kind of okay with them leaving the, the system, but they're all at 80 plus percent occupied when they transferred over. So they were, or converted, I should say. Um, so they were nowhere near what you would consider a failure and even if you wanted to consider it a failure, we're less than a 1% failure rate. So we, we have a very strong success rate um, in the system. Well, and you know, something that you just touched on there is that somebody wasn't exactly following the system. You know, when someone who isn't familiar with franchising comes in and they read the franchise disclosure document, it can feel very, very off-putting. Um, it is franchise or heavy, it is written by franchise or attorneys and some advice given to me 12 some years ago that changed my perspective because sometimes it's just that little shift. Um, don't read it as though you're on the outside looking in wondering, read it as though you've already invested either your hard earned money or your name is on this loan. And will this franchise or protect you against some people that choose not always to follow the system. Because if you'll know during an investigation if a franchisor is just out for your money to invest in, um, those aren't ones that we work with anyway. Um, but if you're out there looking on your own and doing your own research, but a franchisor who will protect you is somebody that you want. If, if a lot of people get concerned, and I understand because, you know, when I first read an FDD, I was, I was very taken aback as to just how, well, obviously one-sided it felt. Um, but the first thing is that people and I thought was, they're going to look for any reason to get rid of me. And yeah, and franchisors don't, they don't want closures. They don't want anyone to fail. Someone of your caliber for a system, they don't want anyone to fail. If someone's struggling for some reason, it doesn't sound like that's happened here, but if there are some in industries where people are struggling like they did last year, you know, they will come in and do everything they can to help support you and make sure you're getting what you need or use their leverage as a nationally known brand to get lower pricing, to help on the real estate. And so actually that's where franchising can actually be more of an assistance than doing something on your own. Yeah, I, I couldn't have said it better myself. Um, it is fairly one-sided. It's there to protect the brand and our franchisees. Um, a lot of what's in the franchise agreement and FDD is there for absolute worst case scenario. Right. Um, and, and a lot of it, you know, I've seen a lot of FDDs, a lot of it, franchisors don't necessarily practice, um, but it's just there for, for worst case scenario. You know, right. one bad apple ruins the whole bunch. If you have a franchisee that's in your market, that's you know, doing something to hurt the brand, well, that, that can hurt your business and we need to step in and, and right. make sure we rectify that. Exactly. All right. Long conversation, but usually a good one to have. So support systems. Yep. 
so we'll, we'll support you every step of the way. You know, my job really is just to find the right fit. I'm not here to jam a franchise down your throat. I just want to make sure you have all the information you need to make an informed business decision. And then once you become a franchisee, um, first thing we'll do is get started on the, the site search. So we have an in-house real estate team. They manage a network of local brokers across the U.S. So you'd work with somebody in your market who knows your market. They've been trained and approved through our real estate team. And you'll have a kickoff call with our broker and head of real estate um, to set goals, expectations, markets you want to uh, develop. We release the broker in the market, find as many locations that fit our criteria. And then you actually drive the market with our head of real estate, who actually at one point had ownership in 26 locations himself. He sold his percentage of ownership and now he's rebuilding his portfolio. So he's back up to seven, has Lisa signed for eight, nine. I think he's about to sign his 10th. Um, so he shows a majority of our real estate. You're in really good hands with him. Um, he'll drive the market with you, evaluate those sites narrow it down to two or three locations where you can start concurrent lease negotiations. Um, so we also help you with the lease negotiations for the property. Um, one of the big things that, about our brain, you know, we're averaging $50 a square foot in tenant improvement allowance, which is helping keep the overall upfront investment down um, for our franchisees. And part of the reason we're able to get that, we're, we're driving anywhere from four to 7,000 consumers into their center on a monthly basis, medium to high income consumers. Um, majority are female and, and females are typically known as the buyer. So it helps the landlord to incentivize other brands to come into their center. We can go into B real estate because we're a destination location. We don't need to be on the corner of Maine and Maine like you would in a, a restaurant concept where right. it's high visibility and convenience is what you're looking for. Um, we're a destination for the professionals and the professional is a destination for their customer as well. Um, so we're able to negotiate very strong leases for our franchisees. The type of real estate that we go into, we're, we're very flexible. Majority is inline retail in a strip center. Um, we have freestanding units, locations inside of shopping malls, second story strip centers, et cetera. And this picture in the top left is an example from our real estate model. So the real estate model shows where all the salons, salon professionals, barber shops, nail salons, beauty related businesses are. Um, to make sure that that particular market or location would support a Phoenix. We're also able to drill down and see how many employees are in each of those lots. Um, so this is an example of the Atlanta market here. Oh, and okay. once you sign the lease, um, we also walk you through the build out. So we have an in-house design construction team. You'll have a call with them at least every other week. Um, we get multiple bids, typically three to five to make sure you're building out at the lowest cost possible. Um, if you have a contractor you'd like us to work with, we can evaluate their bid as well. But oh, that's nice. on those calls, you may have the architect, the general contractor, um, electrician, plumber, whatever it may be, and we can guide them through the build out. And it gets as granular as, you <clears throat> know, the, the light socket needs to be on the other wall and it needs to be 12 inches higher. So our franchisees aren't going to have to figure any of that out. Again, we have 305 open. We, right. we know what we're doing. So we'll, we'll guide our franchisees through that build out. And, and one thing I like to mention here on the real estate, I mentioned this on a previous webinar for a brick and mortar is the fact that I know sometimes clients can get really excited about wanting to know where their, their location could be. <coughs> I think you're giving me your cold. And, you know, it, it comes down to worry about if the business is the right fit for you. Um, because the real estate will, will fall into place. Now, it may not be the exact location that you have your heart set on. Um, it may not be the exact suburb. Um, I like to compare it to when you buy a lottery ticket and you're gonna win the lottery, you know, just because you have all of this money now doesn't mean the house you've always wanted is available to purchase. So, you know, trusting the real estate team and going with the business data on what's going to work for the demographic. Um, you know, if you get a if you get a location in your backyard, that's awesome if it makes business sense, but really make sure you're putting on your business hat, not your personal. I don't want to drive very far to the office kind of hat. And that's some of that perception shifting that you need to do, especially with a brand like this. You're not buying a job with this brand. So you don't need to go into the office every day. This is like you said, some of them own in different states. So it's not going to really matter if this is you know, five minutes from your house because you're not going to have that um, commute. Right, right, exactly. 
Yeah, and and the again, the, the real estate team does a great job of guiding our franchisees through what real estate is, is going to make sense. And then when we negotiate the lease, we look at are the unit level economics going to make sense? Right. Are you going to be successful? You know, we want your we want all your locations to be home runs, and then you're going to continue to grow with us. So okay. you know, your the, the franchisee success is our success. I'm sure other franchisors have said it, but it's it's absolutely true. So here's a question that I get sometimes on the real estate. Let's say someone becomes a franchisee, they're awarded, they accept, and now they're going through the real estate process and your real estate team provides them a list of eight locations that make good viable options as locations that fit the demographics and fit the model. Does the franchisee then have the choice on which one they want to be the one to go with? Yes, absolutely. Great question. I, I should have mentioned something earlier. So ultimately our franchisees have to approve the location okay. and so do we. we we can't force our franchisees and we don't want to force our franchisees into a location that they don't want to develop and aren't comfortable with right. Um, right. so if they don't like the site we'll move on and, and look for another one okay perfect all right good next slide yep next slide right. please um, so we also provide mark, you know, uh, support in every other aspect, um, operations and, and marketing as well. Um, so we have an in-house marketing team, provides all the marketing materials our franchisees need to market their location on a local level, while we also market on a national level or, or macro level. So we do search engine optimization, pay-per-click, Google AdWords, lookalike audience, social media, et cetera, to drive professionals um, to our franchisees' locations. So those increases, the 345%, the 240% increase year to date that I mentioned earlier um, is actually on a national level when in, in actuality, those numbers are much higher because it's not looking at the local level increases. So we provide everything, um, recommended messages for social media, videos for social media, um, flyers and mailers, Craigslist ads, different tactics on how to build relationships with local businesses. We have a 31 point marketing system and, and the franchisees who follow that, they're typically the ones that are opening. You know, we've had quite a few open recently that were at hundred percent occupied before they officially opened the doors. Um, oh, wow. Yeah. So we, we typically start licensing um, or marketing our available suites 60 sometime 90 days out from opening. So a lot of times we'll have a lot of our suites licensed up before we officially open our doors. Um, That's strong. Yeah. So, and then we also have our um, mobile app, Genus platform. This is dual sided, one side for the franchisee. It's more of a property management app. Um, you can, as well as a lead management app for all the professional inquiries that you have. Um, you can communicate with all your professionals, collect payment, houses all your documentation, provides tax documentation. It's also for the professional and it's free for the professional. It's only a one-time setup fee of $250 for the franchisee. Provides scheduling software for the professional, credit card processing at the lowest rate in the industry. And again, we're big advocates for the professional. So we have um, discount prescription cards, telemed, um, access to PPP loan programs. So they get a lot of benefits uh, through the app you know, if they, if they join us. Um, so if you go ahead and click next, um, just real quick, you know, and, and on the financials. Yeah. Yeah. So on, on to the fun part, everybody's been waiting for, I'm sure. Um, but to just backtrack real quick on the operations piece, again, we have somebody come out, they'll train you up on how to operate a location, but you have somebody there 24 um, seven to at, answer any questions, walk you through any situations. So you're not alone at any time. Again, ultimately, we, we want you to be successful. So just keep that in mind. And now, you know, what we look for in our franchisees, um, most of our franchisees who, you know, meet the, the capital requirements are, are typically going to be pretty highly qualified professionals uh, anyways. Um, no specialized experience required. I, I'd tell you 96% of our franchisees did not come from the salon industry outside of you know, getting a haircut or, or a massage. Yeah, so you I think don't you said need this is a property management franchise. Right. Um, and then ability to grow. So this brand just makes sense to be a multi-unit operator due to the semi-absentee nature of the business. Right. Now, it's not a requirement. You, you can start with one and, and grow from there. Okay. Um, most of our franchisees are signing up for, for multiple units. So out of all the deals we did last year, I think only four of them were single unit. Um, so most are, are doing multiples. And then willingness to contribute and follow the system. So we're not the brand that says, you know, shut up, do what we say, and, and don't ask questions. There, there's 
plenty of them out there. Um, we're very collaborative with our franchisees. Um, so everybody has our CEO's direct contact information. We welcome all types of, of dialogue. And you know, we would be stupid not to listen to our franchisees. Now, right. it helps that our senior management team owns locations. We have corporate locations, but our franchisees still make the bulk of the system. So if you have an idea on how to better the system or just want to have a conversation, we're all ears um, and welcome that conversation. So to go on to kind of cost and, and fees here, the average all-in cost after tenant improvement allowance, again, we're averaging $50 a square foot in, in TI, comes out to about $670,000 all-in. Um, now, before tenant improvement allowance, say you were to do it all cash or you own your own location, um, it would be 850000 That includes the initial franchise fee, equipment, build-out, signage, initial inventory, working capital. So it's a turnkey cost and, and then some. Um, so banks typically want to see that you have about 30% cash injection and a little bit left over for, for cushion. So our minimum requirements are more or less set by the bank. Um, so we look for 300000 in liquid for your first location, a net worth of at least 850, uh, ideally a million, um, to make sure that you can qualify for financing. And then the initial franchise fee for your first location is 52500 um, And then it drops down to 40500 for each additional unit if you're signing up one at a time. Now, if you sign up for, for three or more, that third one actually drops down to, to $35,000. Um, so there are some some discounts to, to do three or more. Okay. And then ongoing, um, and speaking of financing, um, our, we have lenders in place that can finance our franchisees. Um, okay. you, can, you can use your own contacts if you have a good relationship with a local bank or, or whatever it may be. Uh, but we do have quite a few lending institutions that are familiar with the brand um, that can help our franchisees finance. Um, and then ongoing fees. So we have a 30 cents per square foot of the facility in royalty and then six cents per square foot in national marketing. So a total of 36 cents per square is charged on a monthly basis. Now we don't start charging that until you've been open for 90 days. So it gives our franchisees some time to, to ramp up when a lot right. of brands are charging that right out of the gate. Okay. All right. Next slide. Yes, please. Uh, um, so just take you through quickly the investigation process uh, that we'll go through after Talanda gives us our introduction. We'll have an introduction call um, with me and the franchise or prospective franchisee. We'll collect an application. Um, now, I know you'll fill out a lot of information with Talanda, uh, but we need to get you on our form. Also helps us to see how, how well you follow a system. Um, and then once we have your application, I'll send you our franchise disclosure document. I'll also send a blank site analyzer, which is kind of a, a performa, and that will help you run the numbers on our model. You can play with that to look at expected revenues, costs to develop, profits, you know, things of that nature. And then we'll have an overview call, which is similar to, to this presentation, a, a little bit longer, um, where I'll take you through A through Z, everything on, on the brand. And then we'll have a virtual discovery day with both of our founders, both Jason and Gina Rivera. Um, so they're very involved. They meet with every franchisee who comes through the system. And then if you say, Philip, I'm ready to be a franchisee, I'll submit your file to the board. Once approved, we'll issue agreements. You'll sign, pay the fee, and then it's off the races for, for the site search, build out, training, everything I just discussed previously. Okay. So that is all that I have today, Talanda, and I certainly appreciate the time. Yeah, so I'm going to ask the big listening. question most people want to ask. I said it in, in my part of the presentation, but how much can someone make? <laughs> right, right. And, and well, absolutely. So we do have 919 in our franchise disclosure document that discloses uh, financial performance representation numbers. And, and we'll certainly go through that throughout the investigation process. And as you said earlier, they'll also be able to speak to our franchisees mm -hmm. uh, to gather that information as well. Okay, so there's a lot of transparency there. That's good. And having, you know, a senior team people investing in this, you know, that usually says a lot about a brand. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. All right, wonderful. Well, I appreciate you being here. Um, next steps, if you like what you've heard on this webinar, uh, schedule a call with me. You can go out to my website, thefranchiseeducator.com, book online, schedule a casual call. Um, if you want, you can email me. It's my first name, Talanda, at thefranchiseconsultingcompany.com. 
that's a long one. It might as well say at war and peace. <laughs> um, and, you know, in the email or the casual call when you book it, you can mention this Phoenix Salon Suites. We can certainly um, get the information that they look for and get you introduced to Phil. Um, sometimes people don't want to take that step yet. Maybe you want to look at some, some pre-qualifications, financial side information. So we um, on our side, I mean, it sounds like you just mentioned you have some internal things financially, but we work with two national brands, uh, one on each coast. One is Guidant up in Seattle. Uh, so you can click there for the pre-qualification um, information that you'll fill in for them. And Benetrends is one in Philadelphia and uh, pre-qualification link there. So this was great. Um, I, I really enjoyed learning more about the brand. Sometimes we get into some fun details here that I didn't know, but um, I think this is helpful. Um, I know probably frustrating about not knowing the numbers on what you can make, but I think Phil's comment on uh, the increase in percentage of people looking for these types of spaces speaks volumes. So reach out to us. Um, we're here to help and uh, have a good day, everyone. Thank you so much, Alina. Have a good Thank day. Thank you.